This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Welcome back to some Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel today as we get set up to just talk three guys that I think are going to be very big key pieces for the Oilers this season that are already in the fold. Obviously, there is still some room for things to maybe hash out a little bit differently here at the end of the offseason, but we'll talk about them nonetheless. Friends, before we get there, though, right off the top, we're trying to do the housekeeping notes as quick as possible. If you're new to the channel, I want you to subscribe for all things Edmonton Oilers, right? You know I've got you if you've watched before. All right, Raphael Lavoie, Xavier Bargo, and, of course, Dylan Holloway. Those are the three guys we're talking about. I know Patrick from the Oilers Fanatic discuss three big pieces coming up from the AHL over the next year, hopefully for the Edmonton Oilers in Lavoie, Borgo, and of course Noah Philp, who is going to be another guy, very interesting actually to watch, who could be a very nice replacement for Derek Ryan either this year or next year. But what I want to talk about is more or less the impact these three guys in Lavoie, Holloway, and Borgo are going to have because of what the Oilers' situation is, right? We talked about yesterday a potential offer sheet, some Leafs fans thinking, oh, we should offer sheet. Ryan McLeod, we've talked about Evan Bouchard taking up a large sum of money in the offseason, right? There's a whole bunch of variables here. And then also the salary cap potentially going up 3 million, 4 million, or only 1 million. And of course, you saw I shared that video from earlier this past season where we discussed all things $1 million salary cap increase and how that really screws the Oilers long term here this season. So that's where we're at, right? There's a whole bunch of kind of situations floating around here. And these three guys really become key pieces of solving that situation. Lavoie, who's on an expiring contract, likely to be qualified. He'll be signed. It'll all be good. No worries about that. Don't worry about it. Unless somehow the Oilers swing some kind of bigger trade for Lavoie and a piece and away you go. Yeah, I'm about to go by. And all of a sudden you've got yourself a top six winger. I don't know. That, that remains to be seen. And that's why I said there's kind of some variables at play. But when it comes to these three guys is we saw glimpses of it with Dylan Holloway this past season where he's going to be a key piece at times, a guy that can be a little bit of a spark plug the way he plays and kind of a guy that's going to be necessary to do what we are going to do this season. I would still firmly plant myself in the camp of saying, I don't know why we didn't see him at all in the playoffs, right? There's enough guys that were going through something that needed to take a night off and clearly it wouldn't have mattered anyway because we ended up losing and I don't know why Dylan Holloway, after coming back, having a pretty good go with Bakersfield Condors and then coming on the board, I don't know why he wasn't given an opportunity to kind of run it back off of last year. If that's a Jay Woodcroft decision, if that's a Ken Holland decision, if that's a cap decision, if that's a contract decision, I actually don't know what the inner workings of that are. And two, there's always bonuses and all this that you got to keep track of. And I'm sorry, friends, you know that I... Uh, I'm very open with you that I work full time and that I just don't have enough time to keep track of all that. So just whatever the situation was, doesn't matter. Sucks that we didn't see him in the playoffs, but we need to see him feature heavily next season. Now for Dylan Holloway, number one is stay healthy. Number two is go out there and be that kind of, not agitator, but agitator light that he is capable of being. Again, I'll harness back to the 2020 World Juniors. If you watched him play for Team Canada that year, he was the most physical, he was the most in-your-face guy during that tournament. Maybe I was being a little bit of a homer and watching it from a biased lens because I was an Edmonton Oilers fan watching my boy play at the World Juniors, but you get where I'm going. Dylan Holloway, or do these three guys that I've mentioned off the top here needs to have a breakout, I guess is what you're saying. He needs to arrive. He needs to be that guy this season at the NHL level for the Edmonton Oilers in the bottom six. You know what Clint Costin did last year? That's what Dylan Holloway needs to do this year. Okay, sum that one up, done and dusted. Now you move on kind of down the list, and the next guy in line is Raphael Lavoie, who again... Right, he's uh, draft plus four year this past year, finished with almost a point per game in the AHL despite a very slow start, getting injured, all that. And he's a guy that, you know what, there's been a lot of knocks to his game, there's been a lot of knocks to the Oilers taking him, and he's just gotten better and better and better and better with every progressing year. And sometimes, as Ken Holland knows best from his days in Detroit, guys don't develop in a one, two, three, they're in the NHL, they're a superstar kind of thing. Some guys take time, and if Raphael Lavoie is going to take time, 
but arrive just in the nick of time for the Edmonton Oilers next season, that would be fantastic. And Lavoie, right, we're not talking about a guy who's probably going to score his 20 goals and 40 assists in the NHL next season and be your solution to missing Kyler Yamamoto in the top six. No, that's not what we're talking about. But you're talking about kind of being able to insulate your right wing a little bit more because you have that added scoring punch, right? Is, yeah, on the right wing, well, you think in the right shots, we have Derek Ryan, Nick Bugstad, those are UFAs, Kyler Yamamoto, Zach Hyman, those are kind of your big guys that you're talking about as right-hand shots. Well, now you insulate one of those guys out with a Raphael Lavoie, and you're still going 11-7. I think Lavoie being a six foot four body, he was, uh, by reports I read today, very physical, very in-your-face mean during the rest of the regular season with Bakersfield Condors this year. So, right, like that's the kind of body you need in that middle nine, middle six kind of deal, right? It depends where you take your 12th forward out. But if you're only going to run three right wingers, having a Zach Hyman type player that's a little bit more physical, a little bit more physically dominating because of his size, that would be a big plus for the Oilers because Lavoie can score goals too. That's what I like about him. And when you think about it too, as Oilers fans would often say, we love size, we love toughness, we love being able to beat the other team up. I actually got a comment today uh, in the comment section just saying, hey, look at what Vegas and uh, what uh, Florida are doing. They're checking and driving the net. Well, I will tell you, if I've got a six foot four guy that likes to check and drive the net like Lavoie seems to over the course of his past five, six years, I'm going to take that in my lineup any chance I can get. So when you're talking about potentially losing some guys, but on the top tier of your prospects coming up next season, adding a guy like Dylan Holloway and a guy like Raphael Lavoie to the roster, that is immaculate in terms of how you take a negative and losing some guys to UFA status into a very big positive. And obviously Dylan Holloway arrives on scene. This is all a very rosy picture I'm painting. And Raphael Lavoie is your third right winger and you're running a great go. Hey, we're fine. We're fine and dandy. But of course, we have to sign him to a contract. So the jury still has to stay out for a few days, I'm sure. And then we can worry about it a little bit later. And now, another one that's going to be really interesting to see. Because I, I don't know what the situation is going to be here. He could have a very good camp and make the team. He could be a key figure on the Bakersfield Condors next year. He could be a shovel-up player to fill in for injuries like Evander Keynes last year. He could be your Matthias Janmark this year. I, I don't know what the situation is going to be with Xavier Borgo, but I'm going to tell you, whatever he does, that kid's going to do well. I've told you before that I really like this kid for the Oilers because he's a guy who I think you can kind of, his junior career speaks for itself. Um, obviously, what he did in Bakersfield this year, he was a special teams weapon. Um, seriously, I, I, I could try and explain all the stats to you, or I could just very heavily encourage you to go look up Xavier Borgo's stats in the AHL this season go to the AHL.com website because it was unreal what he did at times for the Bakersfield Condors this year and right a guy who is developing very nicely along the way after being a top selection for the Oilers just a couple of years ago and now what we have to do is go out there and see where next year takes him right is yes he's going to feature in NHL games I think that's guaranteed knowing what Dylan Holloway's done and what Raphael Lavoie will do as long as he is an Edmonton Oiler come training camp this season. But Borgo, right, you kind of go tier down. Holloway's going to be there no matter what. Raphael Lavoie is going to be there for most of it. And Xavier Borgo, he'll be there for some of it, is how I would kind of sum it up there for the Oilers. So when you think about how this roster is going to be made up, I think Borgo is the hardest guy to make the roster, right? Uh, I think Raphael Lavoie has got a pretty good shot, especially if we trade. Yamamoto, Holloway's there no matter what because you just replace Yanmark with Holloway and guess what? Bing, bang, boom. You're saving a couple hundred thousand dollars on the cap. Cool, that works for me. And then secondary to that, right? Borgo's got the hardest path just because he is the youngest. He, Well, yeah, he is just by a year on Holloway, but he is the youngest. He's the guy that's got to go out there and more or less earn it in training camp, but it might not be a roster spot. It might be a call up when an injury occurs. So that's where the Oilers just kind of have to play all their chips down on the table the right way 
and then go from there. And obviously to the salary cap situation, whether it goes up a million or four million will factor into that quite heavily as well. So there's a whole ton of things, whole ton of variables that we have to consider, but I just wanted to kind of take a look at these three guys, more or less just spark right off of Patrick's video last night, talking about those guys, but I wanted to look at it. He's talking down the line from Lavoie to Borgo to Philp, and I kind of want to go from the top of the line down to the guys that uh, are down the bubble a little bit. So kind of put my own spin on things here today and take a different look because you know as well as I do, and I might be speaking to one person right now, but you know as well as I do that there just ain't much to talk about right now, and it really dang sucks that the Edmonton Oilers ain't advancing to the Stanley Cup final. Friends, I'm Tyson. This is Stolony TV. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I am up on Oda here.